arguably <laughs> most remembered, perhaps the most quoted scripture in all of the Bible. John chapter 3 and verse 16. King James says it this way, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, have everlasting life. Some of us, we memorized that verse as a child. And that simple verse contains a, a message that the Lord wanted me to share with you on today. And, and, and the message simply the greatest. Simply the greatest. I wanted to start by Letting you all know, if you didn't, I suspect that many of you are already aware that there has been a great debate mm -hmm. uh, that has been happening over the course of the past few years. And, and this, this debate, uh, this ongoing, heated, Argument is, is about who is the greatest basketball player right, right. of all time. Mm -hmm. It's a great debate. Heated. Yeah. yeah. I see you, Dee. <laughs> contested argument over who is the greatest of all time the goat and seems to me that up until the past few years that it, that it wasn't a debate at least that's my perspective but now all of a sudden there appears to be a conversation <laughs> uh, over this issue. And I, I decided, uh, well, my, 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 my confession to you today is that uh, I did intentionally uh, abuse my authority as pastor today uh, by making sure everybody knew. Right, right. Where I stood on the <laughs> I see. I confess that I took advantage of the power that's been invested in me on behalf of the leader of this sacred assembly to Mercy. promote my own personal agenda before the people of God today. And uh, it is my conviction <laughs> that Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time. Can I get witness somebody that Michael Jordan is the greatest? And, and, and I decided that I would do more than just state my conviction. Right, I right. decided today that I would provide some evidence. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm with you. I'm so, with you. so uh, again, I, I confess it's, it's an abuse of privilege, uh, but so be it. Uh, Thirty-two thousand two hundred ninety-two points. Six thousand. 672 rebounds, 5,633 total assists, six NBA uh, championships, six finals MVP, uh, five uh, league MVPs, career average of 30.1 points, 6.2 rebounds, 5.3 assists, 
2.4 steals, 0 0.08 blocks, 10 scoring titles, 10 all NBA first team, 9 all defensive first, 2 slam dunk titles, 1 defensive player, 1 rookie of the year, 6 finals MVP, 3 all star MVP, 14 uh, all stars, uh, all on the same team. What I forget, did you? <laughs> Olympic gold medal. <laughs> Got tired of winning and wouldn't play another sport and came back and won some more. <laughs> Never lost in the finals. And, and uh, um, I, I, I just, I just believe that if you're the one that everybody else is compared to in the debate, right, right. then that means you're the one. If, if uh, uh, I, I've never known Michael Jordan to be compared to somebody else, usually everybody's compared to him. That's my evidence. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I, I've made I've made my first case All right. on, on today, but I, I guess the, the 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 bigger issue for me, um, well, because there there are some uh, uh, did I see a, a LeBron James fan up, up in there goes one. <laughs> The young fellas, see, <laughs> young fellas. Uh, I think LeBron is, is greater. And, th and then there's some some old school folk who who might argue that Kareem is is the greatest. And and I and actually I might entertain uh, that conversation because he just kind of gets left out. But uh, uh, he might be the only one that I might actually have a realistic conversation about uh, who is the greatest. Maybe some might say Oscar Robertson or, uh, or, or whoever, the, whoever the other person is. But for me, it's Michael Jordan. And the bigger issue, whoever you think the GOAT is, the, 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 the bigger issue is that it's a debate. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. I hear yeah. you. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation right, mm -hmm. right, right. that there are other people who have entered into that arena to at least debate over uh, because it appears to be there's no clear cut. Mm. In light of all of my evidence, there still appears to be those who would disagree. Mm -hmm. uh, as to who the greatest is of all time. And it's a debate. I guess that's, that's the main point. How, however, I want to suggest to you today that when it comes to the business of living, mm. when it's time to stop the sports arguments, state your case about basketball, when it comes to the business of living, when, when, it, when it comes to facing the reality of dying, when it comes to the topic of your eternal <coughs> destiny, it is my conviction today that there is no debate. Wow. Amen. Amen. That there is no argument. There is only one that I would suggest when it comes to living, when it comes to dying, when it comes to eternity, that God Mm -hmm. simply the greatest.
Amen. That's my firm, unchanging conviction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that God, the in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. That God. Right. Yeah. God who started with nothing and turned nothing right. into something. Right. Right. That God. Mm -hmm. my, my, my former pastor, uh, Pastor Edson, would say, the God who put stars in the sky. Mm -hmm. he, he, he would say that God who put the curve in the banana. God, uh, he would sometimes say, who padded the camel's foot. Okay. That God, I, I want to make sure we're talking about the same. All right. yeah. All right. There's some idols out there. Right. There's some pretenders out there. That's the God to whom I'm referring to. Uh, that that he is the greatest of all time. In, in fact, he is the greatest before time, greatest in time, will be the greatest after time. And just, just like I brought evidence for the basketball debate. I brought some evidence Amen. All right. All right. to support my unchanging conviction Amen. that God is simply the greatest. And, and when I get done with my evidence, I'm going to ask you to do something about it. All right. All right. All right. I'm, I'm just telling you in advance. I'm, I'm going to state my claim as clear as I possibly can Amen. about my convictions about God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to respond. Mm -hmm. right. What is it that makes God greatest of all time? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. Help us. Such that there is no debate, there's nobody else in the arena, uh, that there are no contemporaries. He stands alone, the top of the list, demanding mm -hmm. our attention and our response. But what makes God greatest? If, if, got your bulletin, you can follow along and fill in some of the blanks there to give you something to refer back to throughout the week. I, I, I chose for my evidence this, this single verse of scripture, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. There are four claims in this passage of scripture that we read together that provide my evidence for my conviction about God being the greatest. And I pray when it's all said and done, if you haven't already, you join me with the same conviction. You do something about it. First, first, first evidence, what, what makes God the greatest? He's greatest because he has the greatest love. Mm. All right. That's what makes him the greatest, y'all. He has the greatest love. The scripture said, God so loved the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and if, you, if you didn't know, the, the Bible was not originally written in English. It was translated uh, in English after a little while. It was originally written in Greek, and the author John, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, when he 
wrote it in Greek, he wrote the word agape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was preaching. Mm -hmm. And that's not who baby, baby loves. <laughs> that's that's not you my ace boom cone. Right, right. Ride or die. That's not that kind of love. It's it's not even family love. Right. Unconditional. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the greatest because he's got the greatest love. Unconditional. And, and that means that God loves you. Just as you are. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Huh. Show love. How, how many times have you and I done things to earn somebody's love. Right, right. <clears throat> How many times have we paid a price that was too high? Because mm. we thought we needed somebody's love and we were willing to sacrifice for it. Right. Mercy. That, mercy. Far, far too many times we've had to try to prove mm -hmm. our worthiness mm -hmm. of somebody else's love. Mm -hmm. and, and in those situations, if truth were told, when we think about what we sacrificed, the price that we paid in order to earn somebody's love and <coughs> love that we got at such a steep a price if we had to do it all over again. Hey, <coughs> we would conclude that it just wasn't worth right. it. Right. Yeah. I, I need to tell you today, yeah. God's love yeah. is a as you are mm. kind of love. Yeah. So glad. And, and the thing that blows me away about this as you are kind of love is it's not like the dating game as you are kind of love. You know, the, the dating game when you try to put on your best, right. uh, you try to say it just right uh, so that the other people would be fooled into thinking that's your as you are, when in reality it's your best foot forward. Yep. Some of y'all act like y'all don't know. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all might have been out the dating game for a minute, and I'm glad I'm out that thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I remember that put your best foot forward so you can kind of fool the people. And if you fool them for so long, then it won't matter, and then they can get the real you. <laughs> Anybody ever play that game? <laughs> God's love is an as you are kind of love, and He already knows the real you. And He still loves you. Yes. I need to declare to somebody today He knows you. My God. You can't hide who you are from God. And still, yeah, yes, yes, he loves you. Yes, thank you, Lord. As you are, yes. my God. God so loved mm -hmm. as you are, all of us. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what we've done. Doesn't matter where we've been. Doesn't matter the skeletons in our closet. Uh, right. mm -hmm. God already knows them. Yeah. Well, and he has decided to love you as you are. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. But not only does he love you as you are, he loves you enough to deal with your biggest problem. Mm. I've been loved before 
but not like that. That, that kind of love goes beyond human love. We can, with God's love, learn to love people as they are, mm -hmm. but we can't deal with your biggest problem. Mm -hmm. He loves us enough to accept us, but he also loves us enough to deal with right. our biggest problem. And, and our biggest problem is not our health. Mm -hmm. Our biggest problem is not our relationships, mm -hmm. humanly speaking. Our biggest problem is not our careers. Right. Our biggest problem is not our finances. Our biggest problem is sin. Yeah. Sin is a separator. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is anything that misses the mark of God's holy and righteous standards. Mm -hmm. The Bible says all of us yeah. have sinned. Mm -hmm. right, right, yeah. Come short of the glory of God. All of us have missed the mark. Amen. The standard is not your neighbor. Right. Right. The standard right. is righteousness. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. God, God said uh, in the book of Exodus, thou shalt have no other gods before me, thou shalt uh, uh, not kill, not steal, and, um, all of those things that are listed in the Ten Commandments, just a cursory check down the list. If, if, if you float just a little bit too high, you don't meet the standard of righteousness. And sin separates. Because we've fallen short. Because we're stained. Because we have an internal contamination that we can't scrub off on the outside. There's a penalty to be paid for that. If God is holy and we ain't, it's like oil and water. Sin is a separator. Between us and God. He wouldn't still be holy if he was contaminated by our sin. Right. Sin is a separate, but God knew us and loved us as we are. He knew us and he loved us enough to do something about our biggest right. problem. Right. When we were helpless to fix that issue, mm -hmm. when we were without hope, without God, because we've been separated by our own sinfulness, mm -hmm. God stepped in. Yes. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> to deal with our biggest problem. Mm -hmm. That's love. Mm -hmm. He has the greatest love yeah. of all time. Yeah. He loves you so much. Yeah. He just accepts you. But he dealt with your issue. Nobody else could. Yeah. That's love. Yeah. Yeah. What makes God the greatest? First of all, he has the greatest love of all time. Second of all, he gave the greatest gift yes. of all time. Right? Yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He gave the greatest gift 
of all time. Only God's Son. His name is Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God gave the best to fix our problem. Mm -hmm. When we were unable to fix it, and if truth be told, not only were we unable to fix it, but we keep adding right. to it. Right. 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 We keep digging, we keep on digging a hole deeper and deeper. Every thought, every deed, every action that doesn't line up with the standard of holiness is just digging a deeper hole. It's creating a, a, gap, a, a chasm that we cannot cross and we keep on Adding to the same problem. That's true. Amen. God loved us enough to give his best. Amen. Why? Because talk is cheap. Mm. He showed it. He didn't just advertise it. He didn't just make a declaration about it. He demonstrated. Yeah, yeah. He proved, he put his love in action and he gave the greatest gift of all time. His son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. A couple of things about this gift that I want to share with you today. He gave this gift to us. That, that's what the birth of Jesus is all about. God giving the greatest gift to us. He, he, he didn't consider his rights to be in a heavenly environment free of sin and contamination <clears throat> something to hold on to because love dictated mm. that he come see about us. Mm, yeah. He left a holy habitation yeah. to enter into the sinful world that he created so that we could see mm. God. Mm -hmm. That's a preacher. And when we read in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, about the story of the life of Jesus, we get to see God in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So that we can never say, I wasn't there, but I believe the record that God left us in the Bible to be accurate and trustworthy. Because it's all that we got. And God's not playing peekaboo. He's not playing hide and seek. He wants us to know. Right. Right. So I believe everything in here. Amen. Is exactly. What he wanted us to have. Yes. So I can read in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. About the story of the life of Jesus. And come to the conclusion. That he gave Jesus to us. Mm -hmm. We can see him. That those who were who around at that time could touch him, could have relationship with him, could observe him do miracles and proclaim the kingdom of God and, and to, to hear what Jesus said in our text today, for God so loved the that's the words of Jesus. And he said, I and the Father are one. He gave us the greatest gift. Yes. He gave Jesus to us. More importantly, he gave him for us. Yes. He didn't just come into the world so that we could see what God was all about. He came to die. 
sin requires a payment. It comes at a penalty. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. There is a price to be paid. Because not only is sin a separator, but it comes with a consequence. Yes, it means we owe God. It means we should have died and been separated from God forever. But because he has the greatest love of all time, he gave the greatest gift of all time. And Jesus died for you. He traded places. He was your substitute. Mm -hmm. He died on a cross to pay the penalty for your yeah. stuff. Right. Huh. Right. Thank you. For your sinful, rotten, nasty stuff. Mm -hmm. The stuff that you hide in the closet. The stuff that you boastfully in your sinfulness proclaim before the world. Oh, Lord. Mm. The stuff that you struggle with and don't have the power to overcome. All of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He paid for it. Mm -hmm. With his life. Right. And he died on a cross. Yes, sir. That's why God is the greatest mm -hmm. of all time. He has the greatest love of all time. Loved us as we are. Loved us enough to deal with our biggest problem. How did he do it? He gave the greatest gift of all time. He gave Jesus to us. He gave Jesus for us. My third piece of evidence today is that God made the greatest offer of all time. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him. That, that, my friends, is the greatest offer of all time. Whosoever believeth in him. Who's whosoever? Liars. Amen. Cheaters. Fornicators. <coughs> Adulterers. Racists. Who's whosoever? Take a look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I, I'm whosoever. You whosoever. Your enemy. Whosoever. The folk that you don't like and the folk that don't that that you don't like and the folk that don't like you. They're whosoever. This offer is for all of us. And, 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 and the offer is doesn't matter who you are doesn't matter what you've done doesn't matter what's in your closet doesn't matter how long you did it doesn't matter the consequences doesn't matter who it affected all you got to do is believe huh. Amen. Amen. My God. That, is that not what it says yes. whosoever mm -hmm. that's all of us mm -hmm. believe it, it's the greatest offer because it's not on limited supply. Right. God's got enough yes, sir. all of us. Yes, sir. That's why there's no competition. That's what makes the offer so great. Yes. He's got plenty in store. Yes. Yes. Enough for the whole wide world. Yes. And everybody, whosoever, all you got to do, believe. It Belief is like Two sides of a coin. There's a heads and a tails. And you need both sides 
to make up the coin. There, there, there's right. two sides to belief. Can I tell you about it? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Belief is a turning. It's a turning. And there's two sides to the turning. You got to turn from, you got to turn to. All right, all right. All right. All right. That's what belief is. Mm -hmm. What do you need to turn from? <clears throat> the sin that separated you. At least have the intentionality. Right, right. right. At least but bring the desire. He's going to bring the power, but you need to bring the want to. Right, yeah, but, right. You, you can't believe and still hang on. Mm -hmm. You can't sit on the fence. You can't have this and something that's opposite and have that at the same time. You gotta turn. Somebody say turn. Turn. You gotta turn, y'all. You gotta turn from at least the intentionality and the desire to turn from sin. Mm -hmm. And at the same time you turn from, you got to turn to. Mm -hmm. Turn to Jesus. Yes, sir. That's it. Turn to the gift yes, sir. Yes, sir. That God gave out of love. It's the only way. Uh, folk out in the world will tell you, you can go your way and I can go my way. And as long as we got something to believe in, then everybody's entitled. Well, yeah, everybody's entitled to their belief, but there ain't but one truth. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right, preacher. Okay. Well. Jesus said, I am the way, the right. truth, the life. Right. No man comes to the Father mm -hmm. except through me. Ain't but one way. Right. 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 Got to turn from, you got to turn to Jesus. Amen. Not Allah, not Buddha, right. mm -hmm. not Joseph Smith. Not none of them. Yeah, folk that's church. dead in the grave and yeah. can't do nothing about your biggest right. problem. Turn yeah. to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Right, right. Mm. Belief is a turning. Mm. You got to turn from, you got to turn to. And the reason why it's the greatest offer is because he's given all of us the ability to do that. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. All of us can turn from and turn to. Whosoever right. will turn, yeah. that's the offer. Mm -hmm. okay. It's the greatest offer Amen. of all time. Amen. What, what makes God simply the greatest? I'm trying to state my case today. Right. He has the greatest love mm -hmm. of all time. Yes, sir. He gave the greatest gift mm -hmm. of all time. Not only that, he made the greatest offer of all time. And my last piece of evidence, he provides the greatest promise oh, yeah. of all time. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him, the last part says, should not perish but have yes. everlasting life. Wow. God made the greatest promise of all time. If you would turn today, he promises life and eternity. Life and eternity. That life is of such a quality that it can never be broken. Thank you, Lord. Not even by you. Mm. Yes. Whosoever believed in him should not perish. That 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 life, that promise is unbreakable. Mm. So even if you should turn, 
and before the sun set. Huh. Yeah. You stumble and fall in sin. The promise is still true. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. If you should turn today and worship, and before you walk out the door, sin expresses itself. Uh -huh. right. The promise right. Right. is still good. Yes. Right. Yes. Whosoever believed in him yes. should not perish. Thank you, Lord. No matter what, it is guaranteed yeah, yeah. That, that new life is guaranteed. It can never be broken. That's why when believers go through difficulty, they may drop low. Hmm. They'll never experience life without relationship with God. Yes. Jesus. That's why we can rebuild. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That's why we can start over. Because yes. at the bottom of it all, God is still yes. with us. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter how many times we stumble, no matter how many times we sin, it's not to be taken advantage of, but in our process of perfection right. since we ain't perfect yet we gonna keep on stumbling right. and falling and there's no stumble there's Thank no you. fall Thank there's you. no sin that you can commit after you turn mm. that will nullify the life that God has in store mm. Mm. what a blessing yes it yes. is should not perish have everlasting life. It's the promise of life, it's the promise of eternity, that this life, this newness, this forgiveness of sin, this cleansing, this putting in of righteousness into our account will last literally forever. It will even spiritual life will outlast physical death. Uh -huh. that, yeah. that not even death can separate us yes. from the love of God. Yeah. I, it's time for me to shut it down. But I gave my evidence. My conviction when it comes to living, when it comes to dying, when it comes to eternal destiny, God yes. is simply the greatest. That's my conclusion to the matter. I don't believe there is a debate. There is no argument. There is no conversation. He stands alone. He is simply the greatest. Because he has the greatest love of all time. God so loved the world. He made the, gave the greatest gift of all time. He gave his only begotten son. Yes, sir. Made the greatest offer of all time. Whosoever leaveth in him. Yes. All you gotta do is turn. Yes, 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 yes. He made the greatest promise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All time. Mm -hmm. Should not perish. Mm -hmm. But have everlasting yeah. life. Mm -hmm. I, I told you that I was going to state my conviction. I was going to give my evidence. Then I said, I'm going to ask you to respond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Life and death are in the balance. Mm -hmm. Separation from God is in the balance. Where you spend eternity. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. My God, my God. Mm. 
Right. It lies in the balance. Yeah. Unburdening the weight of sin mm -hmm. lies in the balance to your response to this message. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. If you believe God loved you enough to send Jesus to you. You believe he is the son of God. He died, paid your debt. God rose him from the dead. If, if, if you are willing to surrender your life to Jesus. If you're ready to invite him to your heart, into your life, just stand where you are. That's you today. Life and death are in the balance. Those that know the Lord pray. you already made that decision but for whatever reason you strayed from the church you're ready to return to be amongst the people of God and together we would encourage one another on the journey you're ready to reunite rekindle your relationship with God for or and with his people. Just stand. That's you today. <laughs>